Hey everyone, uh, I'm Ram. I work on the cloud Android team or Cuttlefish team over at Google and Android. Um, past iterations of this talk have been given by Alistair, my manager. Uh, the last one was in 2021 or, or 2020 uh, with Android automotive virtualization. I'm just going to talk a little bit about kernel development on Cuttlefish. Let's see. So Cuttlefish is a virtual device um, used by kernel ESP and systems developers to develop for pre-silicon uh, kernel software and various Android configurations. Um, as for why you should use it, uh, so we've spent the last few years becoming very Bird.io compliant from our beginning days where we had a shared memory window. Uh, so we now support a whole plethora of virtual devices or Bird.io drivers which enables us to support a wide variety of um, KVM compliant uh, VMMs. So we started with QEMU and we now support CrossVM, which is a Rust based uh, project from Chrome OS. Um, we also support Gem5 as of this last year and a project from Open Synergy, which is a automotive um, virtualization vendor uh, called CockOS. Um, this then gives you, the, the resulting virtual device has a number of outputs, ADB, WebRTC, so you can connect to it by a, a browser and then serial if the device is truly borked. Um, you can also debug the device and via GDB or printf. Um, an interesting fun fact is that we are used to test the upstream Linux kernel through the Android mainline tree. Um, we do run pre-submit slash CI for them um, across x86-64 and ARM64 when that's running again. Uh, so we do support a variety of configurations, ARM32, ARM64, uh, x86-86-64 across a variety of platforms, your various cloud providers with or without GPUs, uh, the Ampere boxes that are popping out. You can em emulate us on QMU, so that's also pretty nice. Um, we do now support a bootloader for the past two years, and we also do support the boot config starting from about beginning of 2021, and we're all pretty open source, so upstream, yeah. Um, some steps on how to get started developing. You just need to install a few Debian packages listed on that GitHub link over there. Uh, you can build the target off Android, and then you can build the kernel and the relevant uh, kernel modules using the mentioned basal steps from the thesis uh, presentation. Let's see, as for interacting with the device, the build will produce this uh, wrapper called launch CVD, um, which just interacts with cross VM, sets up some other uh, processes and then launches the device. Um, steps to GDB into the kernel, as for the future, we're interested in a number of use cases. We'd like to toy around with the idea of EFI booting Android. Um, we're still talking around internally on that. EROFS, David's gonna give a talk on that afterwards, but we'd also like to demo it. Running Cuttlefish on Cuttlefish, just to clear out any virtualization related uh, problems. Automotives, interested in automotive or SCMI. If we were to truly be compliant, we would also toss in replay protected memory block. And then we do support GPU acceleration through Verdio GPU, um, but we don't support it for ARM64 just yet. Uh, and then our camera and video encode decodes are not yet supported for acceleration. So um, if you would like to reach out to us with feature requests, problems, yell at us that email, and then we have some documentation online. That source android.com link, questions. So if I can make a general comment. So um, Alistair had been suggesting I use a uh, goldfish for a number of years and sort of took me in a while to sort of clue in on the value of it. And so, cause I was using the emulator mm -hmm. plenty of times. And uh, one of the benefits that I, is not listed there, but at least for me as one, is effectively I can run Cuttlefish on a cloud, not have anything connected to it, and connect to it when I want to, whereas if I'm running the emulator, I have to hold up my desktop. 
effectively to run the emulator. Mm -hmm. So um, I found that to be kind of interesting. Effectively, I can run like 20 cuttlefishes, yeah. uh, right? And connect to whichever one I actually want. Whereas mm -hmm. if I'm doing work on the emulator, there's just one on my desktop. Uh, so yeah, I want to point that, that as one of the values of cuttlefishes is effectively that, that you can effectively sort of run 20 of them on a cloud and mm -hmm. connect to which one one that you are actually interested in. It's, it's interesting you mentioned that. Um, something we're working towards uh, at the moment is being able to take that cap uh, capacity and then launch various different Android targets, so phone, tablet, Wear device, et cetera, and enable them to talk over the uh, emulated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth networks to simulate device-to-device -device interactions, which would hopefully improve Android interactions, but uh, will. You thought about running Cuttlefish in a PKVM? Uh, so we do have some capacity for that, though I think David might be able to flesh that out. Uh, at the moment, we can boot on non-protected mood on RockPies for the debug story that he did mention. Um, I'm not too familiar on the PKVM bit there, though. Interesting if you can run it on Pixel 6 or device yeah uh, and we can try that right we should hmm. we, okay we actually do it the other way around we we test pkvm with because of using nested virtualization um yes oh through microdroid yeah um yeah so right now we we use nested vert on intel to test pkvm so we we spin up virtual machines uh, side by side with with the Cutsofish, uh Cutsofish VM, but we haven't actually tried doing it the other way around, where we would spin up Cutsofish inside PKVM. There, there have been some proposals for like, what what could you use this virtualization for? Like, could we do like a compatibility story when we run an older version of Android in a VM side by side with the uh, with the uh, host? But we haven't really explored any of that. We'll we'll get back to you on that. Right, so there are two questions uh, in the chat room. So the first one is, what makes Cuttlefish better than Waydroid? Or rather, what does Waydroid and Cuttlefish, com uh, how does Waydroid and Cuttlefish compare as Android targets? What is the second target? Waydroid. Waydroid. Container? I think it's a desktop thing for running Android apps, is that right? It's, I think we might as well skip to the, the other question since can, it's not a known target to... Uh, I around. can respond to the, the resp uh, question uh, later. Okay. Yeah. The second question is, is the Android virtualization framework also intended to allow an app to run uh, a non-Android Linux system in a VM? I would, if David wants to answer that one. <laughs> Um, so technically, that would be supported. Um, sorry, I'll take this off. Um, technically, that is supported within AVF, but as I said, those APIs are not public yet, so it's going to, need to go through um, review through the API Council, and we'll see where we land when when the, the technology supports that. <laughs> sorry for stealing your Q and A around. No. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, thanks for having me.